So just a little bit about me. Um, I already mentioned that I'm a co-founder of Coder World. So just a little bit about Coder World. Uh, we are an established 501c3 nonprofit organization that encourages uh, girls and women to pursue a career in computer science. So we offer free workshops and camps and other in-person events in our local area to kind of enhance that educational learning experience and get more girls interested in pursuing whether a major in computer science or even a career. So... I hope to major in computer science in college. I'm specifically passionate about cybersecurity and AI, and I've worked a little bit in AI research, specifically with computer vision and transfer learning models. And in my free time, I really like to read, spend time with my friends, and play field hockey. Hi, everybody. So my name's Isha. And like I said, I'm also a co-founder of Coder World alongside Shivika. So I'm also interested in pursuing computer science in college, um, specifically like data science and all that stuff. And um, apart from Coder World, I'm also a part of Tech Girls and their teen advisory board. So I do some workshops through there to like um, encourage middle schoolers to also start their computer science journey young. And outside of all that, I am on my school's varsity cheerleading team, and I like to hang out with my friends. Um, this is just a reminder for attendees that if you guys have any questions, we can you can put them in the chat and we'll go over them at the end of the webinar. Um, the first set of questions are going to be general questions, so both of you guys can answer them. Um, what made you want to major in computer science and when did you realize you were interested? I can start with this question. So I think I signed up for my first coding class back in sixth grade. So it's been uh, many, many years now. But honestly, to me, it was just like some class that I needed to fill up my schedule with. But I didn't and I didn't realize it was actually going to end up being really, really fun. So I started um, with Scratch, the block coding platform, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I used to spend hours just on my own messing around with it. And then I realized that I actually wanted to learn how, you know, games were made. Like we always played so many, I always played so many video games with my friends and my sister when growing up. So I was like, why not learn how to create these games? And so I kind of just began exploring on my own. So I started learning Python. I took AP Computer Science A in my school and I learned Java. So I did a lot of like, you know, game development and other things within with the language. And then I kind of branched out into app development with Swift and even web development with HTML and CSS. So I tried like dipping my toes into all the different languages or the core languages that most programmers use these days and really get that exposure to how computers work. But yeah. Yeah, my experience was similar growing up. Um, also, my parents um, were both in IT, so I kind of grew up like seeing that. And then I was also really interested in video games. Like I had a really big like Roblox space specifically, and Roblox has this like workspace where you can build your own games like through all that. So I was just interested in technology, like period, like growing up. And then my library offered free coding classes. So my mom signed me up for that. And at first I I was dreading it a little bit, but after like, it was only like a two week course and it was with like Ruby, like it was like the most basic it gets. But after that, I realized that I actually did like it. Like I enjoyed like going to the library every day for like the two week camp. So then um, that was around like sixth grade as well. And then I started picking it up like on my own time, like um, like in middle school, I, I myself would join Tech Girls workshops. Like there would be other various like youth led nonprofits that like there are now, like I would join their kind of stuff in middle school. Um, and then when I got to high school, I, um, I took some intro classes that my school offers. I go to an IB program, so it's a little limited with like electives, but um, it was like web development, Java, and Swift were the three classes I took my freshman, sophomore, and junior year. Cool. So the next question is, what are some of your future goals pertaining to computer science? Okay, so 
personally, so I mentioned earlier, I'm really interested in cybersecurity and AI. So in college and kind of beyond, my goal is to work towards like in that industry, the cybersecurity industry. So I'm really interested in going into defense when I'm older, whether it's for companies like Lockheed Martin, NASA, or, you know, just working directly for the government in the Department of Defense, but, you know, working to protect our country or just in all in that whole area, because I've just always find that so awesome. And I've watched too many cop shows. So that's kind of gotten me really interested in um, that field. So that's kind of what I want to do after college and kind of with my internships in college as well. Um, like I said earlier, I would like to focus in like data science probably um, and more specifically like my like ultimate like dream dream like out there would be to do da data science for any Philly sports team like the Phillies, Flyers, Sixers, Eagles like I don't care like I would love to do like data science and data analytics for like a sports team because it would just it would be such a cool experience obviously like but that's just like a fun little goal that I've had but um. But yeah, just anything with data science, data mining, maybe like social media analytics, um, data and info, like management, like all that stuff is something that interests me. But like um, overall, like fun dream goal would to like implement it, stuff that like I like, like sports and other things like that. Yeah. So the next question is, how do you guys balance school and extracurriculars? And do you guys have any advice for that? So personally, I've tried a lot of different methods, like throughout high school to figure out how I can, you know, effectively manage my time. I've tried a bunch of different calendars um, and like the reminder app and all these different apps. But personally, what worked out the best for me was literally just creating a to-do list on my notes app. So I don't really like handwriting things it's just because I feel like with a laptop or like on a device I can always constantly adjust things if I need to like whether it's in school or at home or if I'm like on the go and I wouldn't always have a planner with me so I found that the best and then I also have this app called time tree actually Isha introduced me to it so I like to use that for more bigger events whether it's I don't know sports games or if I have an event for a club um and things like that but for my to-do list it's all about homework applications and things that I need to complete um any some advice I would have is really find don't be afraid to kind of figure out what you think is the best tool to use it took me like two years to actually be able to end up figuring out that the notes app and time tree worked best for me um also make sure you get your sleep I understand like you might be like have like a heavy load of work to do whether it's your homework and then you may have sports and then clubs and then other activities it is really important to sleep because in the end sleep is really what is the driving factor of your performance and if you don't get that sleep then really you probably won't be performing as well as you want to on tests or in games or matches and things like that so. I would like to emphasize the second part that Shavika said like sleep like sleep is so important like one thing about me is like if once the clock hits 10 p.m like my laptop's closed like everything's plugged in I'm hitting the hay like um no matter like where like the progress lined up because i it's also like knowing yourself personally. Like I know like I I need sleep in order to even have like a functional productive day the next day because sacrificing like your sleep isn't like enough. Like it's like not, don't sacrifice your sleep basically. Like it's not a big enough deal to do that because also um, piggybacking off of that, like knowing when you work best. I'll, wait, I'm going to go into how I manage it soon, but I'm going to go with advice first, actually, because I'm already there. But um, knowing when you're knowing yourself and when and how you work best is super important. I always tried to like stay up and do stuff like that. But then I realized like I was never actually doing meaningful work. So it works best for me is if I go to sleep early and then I wake up the next morning and I do it before school like that, like that's what works best for me because I also, I have stuff after school. I have stuff. My practices personally are at seven to 9 PM. Like once I come home from practice, it's time for bed. So what's works best for me is waking up early and tackling all that stuff. 
And also like Shavika was saying, like figure out like what works best for you and like the planning phase. So how I personally manage everything is um, I have a paper calendar and I have a digital calendar. So my paper calendar is like where I can be messy and like color code everything. So I have like various events. So like for like all my cheer stuff, that's in like blue. My school subjects are categorized by like my color folder. Like that's that each has a color. If I have like a club meeting, that's a different color. Like all so that way I can like visually see it. And um yeah, I would suggest having that so you can physically cross everything out. And then also time tree is so good because you can also share it with other people and it's easily edible and you can change colors. And yeah. Yeah, for sure. Those are really good advice. Um, so the next question is, uh, what advice would you have for rising freshmen, sophomores, or juniors? Okay. So personally, these past, this past school year, actually, like in my junior year, I kind of started getting this like mentality where it's like, you know, you only live once like YOLO and that everything happens for a reason. So really don't be afraid to, you know, especially if you're like a freshman or a sophomore and you're kind of getting into school and things are starting to pick up. Don't be afraid to talk to your teachers. Um, it's really, really important you make those connections with your teachers now. So that way, when it comes time for recommendation letters, for whether it's a summer program or even college, you'll already have those relationships built. Um, also, just interacting with upperclassmen, if you're like a freshman or a sophomore, asking them about their high school experience, what they've done, because if you're interested in following and kind of like following their footsteps and doing something similar, like you should probably, and if they end up going to a place where you want to go, like a college or maybe in a job or a career or something like that, then you should not be afraid to reach out to them because they will probably be more than happy to help you out with whatever you may need because maybe they didn't get that support, but they're seeing that you're proactive in what you're what you want to do. So um they'll be more inclined to help you out. Um also just try to stay organized. This is also for kind of juniors. This is for everyone. Just stay organized and try to stay on top of your things. After a certain point in school, whether you're a freshman or a senior, things do start picking up and it might seem like a lot for you. But if you just take a moment to kind of step back, reorganize your thoughts, kind of prioritize what you want to do first, like what your first deadline is or um, what is coming up, like what is the most what is the closest thing that's coming up and kind of working your way back from there. That'll really help you out in the long run and just make you feel a lot less stressed in general. Yeah, I would, um, with talking to teachers and stuff like that, like, don't be afraid to talk to them. And also don't be afraid to ask for help and ask questions. Like if you have like a really busy weekend with this, this and this, but something's due like on Monday, like ask for help, ask for an extension, like all that stuff. And also like, I know for my school personally, we have like dedicated time in our schedule to go to teachers and ask questions. But um, if, if your school doesn't have that, like find the time, like go to school early and ask them this, this and this. And I feel like just having one on one time with teachers like helps you so much with like understanding material, recommendation letters um, and just like for your own learning, because at the end of the day, like you are in charge of your own learning. Like it's not the teacher's responsibility. It's not your parents like you're like you're the one that's like in charge of like how well you do so I think it's really important to show that to your teachers too that like you're gonna take that extra step and talk to them and ask for help because also if they know what's going on if like they don't know what extracurriculars you're in like outside of school like they don't know how busy you are like once you build that relationship with them it makes it a lot easier to like get help and manage your time better um and stay organized that's a really big one like if you feel like you have a lot um, coming up in the week, like figure out how to allocate your time. Like maybe you have three deadlines on Friday. Well, what can you do Monday and Tuesday for the first thing and Tuesday and Wednesday for like, really like every Sunday, like what I loved was sitting down and like seeing what I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and seeing like what, um, times I can allocate to doing what tasks. 
Um, for rising freshmen specifically, like actually don't slack because once you, once you start off a certain way, it's really hard to like turn over a new leaf and like change like how everything's going. Like I feel like it's easier to just like keep building, but it's harder when you start off a certain way and to like completely like change it around. So freshman year, like it, it's hard because it's a big adjustment to high school, but you still really try in all your classes, get the help you need. And sophomore and junior, like I feel like sophomore slump and junior year is the hardest year. Like it's true, like it hits, but like you, yeah, at the end of the day, you have to realize that you have to keep pushing. Like you only have four years of high school, like try your hardest all four years. And also to balance that, go to your school activities, go to dances, because again, you only have four years. So like make sure you're making the most of it at the same time. I also just wanted to add one more thing, like kind of unrelated to what Isha said, but in your freshman and sophomore year, if you kind of have a general idea of what you may want to do in college, it's a good idea to start building a portfolio. It's really important to, you know, work on projects. You don't necessarily have to do like groundbreaking research or go to, you know, those competitions like ISEF as like a sophomore or freshman, no one's expecting you to do that. But it's just more starting to explore, like start with mini projects. If you're interested in computer science, maybe take a course online and build a website that advocates for an issue. And you know, as you start getting more experience in certain fields and you start building off of the knowledge from before, it's a really good way to show to colleges and even like in your career and beyond, like to uh, recruiters, how you've developed as like in your skills and as a person so it's just something really useful to have to just show what you've been able to accomplish our years and you don't necessarily have to do like the like a lot of the things that high schoolers do maybe like starting a nonprofit or doing research um with some sort of like high-end professor you if you just find a professor at a local school or just do a club or a not like an organization that you really care about on an issue that you really care about. That's all that really matters. Like don't be pressured into doing these things because everyone around you is doing it. Genuinely do it because you want to and that you're actually interested in doing it. Yeah, for sure. These are all very good advices, especially with the communication and planning because they're very important. Um, the next question is, with the job industries and markets constantly changing, is there a way you guys are preparing for this changing industry? Um, so I personally don't have work experience, but I obviously like that's because like the industry is changing and it's difficult for high schoolers to just get um, in those positions in the first place. But I guess in the future, the way I would approach the changing industry is just by staying like open minded and remaining adaptable to all situations. So just like, you know, always staying curious, learning more things about um, whatever may apply to my field and just kind of getting a sense of what the new thing is so right now the new thing is gen ai so you see chat gpt you see dolly you see all these new um chat bots that are being created so how can i so all like the way i would approach it is how can i build the skills necessary to stay up to speed with these areas yeah um i i was thinking the same thing about being open-minded like don't probably like not going into it like thinking one way because obviously like computer science and like STEM itself is always changing. So definitely like being open minded and also like to remember that like it's never too late to keep learning. Like just because you know this one set of skills doesn't mean you can't learn this other one. Like um if something new, if something's new and upcoming, you can still learn it like while it's like evolving and all the things. Like definitely like keep doing research, um keep learning all the things to make sure like once you do enter like the like job industry and everything like that like that you're prepared and that you've you should know that you've done all that you can and definitely don't like be stubborn like be open-minded all the things and another thing is um hopefully like I think our target audience here is high schoolers create a LinkedIn account 
Um, it is so incredibly useful. Um, you can use it to literally network with anyone on that platform, whether it's a recruiter at a person or a recruiter or another student or like someone who you might like want to intern with at their startup. Those platforms like LinkedIn are super duper helpful because networking is I think personally, the biggest way you're going to be able to really be up to date with an, like a changing industry or find a job because you'll be able to build those connections with people and they'll help you find more connections. And it just kind of makes like a chain, like a, literally a network to help you figure out like the next step to help you adjust to the new industry. Yeah, and even with these changing industries, a lot of these skills are transferable. So I agree, like, connections are probably more important. Um, these next few questions are going to be a bit more specific to the specific, like, areas you want to go into computer science. But if um, if the question also applies, you can also answer. Um, what is it about cybersecurity and artific artificial intelligence that interests you? Okay, so for cybersecurity, um, like I mentioned earlier, I've always been like a big fan of cop shows and just watching all these shows where the FBI or the CIA is involved. But particularly for me, it's more the computer science aspect. I know that sounds kind of nerdy, but it's always been so intriguing to me how these agents always use their computers to protect from threats and things like that. I mean, that's honestly why I got interested. And then I took a couple of like, I did a summer program on um, embedded, like in a, with a course of embedded security and hardware hacking. And so I really got to dive deeper into the hardware aspect of computers. And that was, I found that really, really interesting because for most of my CS journey, I've been interested or I've been learning about the software stuff, but getting the hardware exposure actually made me realize that, you know, that is also equally as important as software and keeping your computer safe. Um, so yeah. And then for AI, it's just the way that it kind of mirrors the human brain is very, very, like is amazing. Amazing. AI literally has a power to talk to you, have conversations with you. I mean, it can drive cars at this point. It can really do a ton of things and it still is growing. Like we are still in it's AI's very early stages. And it's just because this is such a brand new technology, I think it's just a thrill of it being so new, so like so capable of doing human tasks that it's just so interesting because in the future, like I can see myself and my career working with AI or maybe AI might even replace my job but I don't know <laughs> but it's just its capabilities have always just been so I mean like interesting to me so yeah yes. um is there well since you technically already answered this um what is your opinion about AI and do you think it can, well, do you think it should be allowed in like work environment or like a school environment? I definitely think so. It 100% should be allowed, but you like with its limits. So school, school boards and districts need to kind of figure out the, the, like the kind of like the maximum limit that students can use AI, obviously copying and pasting from it directly to write your essays is not a very good idea because you're not learning anything but I like to kind of compare it to the calculator like everyone thought that, that like teachers and schools probably thought when the calculator first came out that I was gonna um like what's it called not it would decrease students mathematical capabilities but in reality it really didn't it actually helps them I mean we don't have to do like 63 plus 72 by hand, we can just have a calculator do it. I mean, everyone should be able to do it after a certain point, like in high school, like doing those simple sums, but it saves a lot of time. It goes kind of the same with AI. When you're writing essays, sometimes you're stuck and you're experiencing writer's block. Having that tool to kind of guide you is really, really helpful. And also it's just extremely useful if you wanna learn something specific. 
Google doesn't always have the answer you're looking for. Like I know I've spent probably like sometimes 10, 15 minutes trying to find an answer that I need to, but chat GPT or like Bard um, or Bing AI just generates it in just a couple of seconds. And it's actually the cur like the most precise thing that I'm looking for because those models, those models are trained to be, um, to understand, understand very specific um, prompts. So I like, kind of to sum everything yes it should be a lot in schools but in limits it is super duper helpful um and i think it's just a great tool to assist students when working on an english class social studies even math like explaining certain problems that, that you wouldn't understand so yeah for sure Um, do you think your experience will prepare you for your future career? And both of you guys can answer. Um, I can just go ahead and then Isha can answer. I think so, yes. Throughout high school, I have tried my very best to get exposed to all different um, aspects of computer science and you know, like whether it's data science or AI or cybersecurity or web development, I really gotten like a little taste of everything and I think those skills just those basic skills and everything will help me for like as like the foundation of my career but once I figure you know like I've kind of figured out that I want to gear towards AI and cybersecurity. so just developing those skills through online courses so far and just finding programs and classes here like locally will definitely give me a boost for college and beyond, because I'll already come prepared with those skills in, in hand. A lot of students in college, when they're majoring in something, which is totally okay, they don't have much experience in it, but that kind of like experience that you build in high school is definitely extremely useful. And you don't want to let go of what you learned throughout your high school years, because it is equally as important as college. Yeah, I agree. I definitely think that my experience will prepare me for my future career and um, specifically for college because through like all my activities that I'm doing, I feel like I've also learned useful skills outside of like the computer science field. Like I've learned to have a good mindset. I've learned to manage my time. I've learned like to be vulnerable and ask for help. I've like also learned to like open my mind to like new things. Um, but as for my like actual like hands-on experience, I definitely think Um, that'll give me like a leg up because I have been exposed to various things like I'm when I go into college and I take these intro courses like I'll already have exposure to like the basics of it and then also taking like college level classes while in high school that's definitely helpful like for like credits wise and also just for like like knowledge wise and also like um being able to like try all these different things while still being in high school has like built my work ethic and like my study ethic like I know that like for my classes like I have to come home from school and like really like absorb what I learned like do practice stuff study all the things um so I feel like my computer science like experience like taking classes will help me and also like how I've like my high school experience period with all the clubs and sports and everything will also help my future career Yeah, for sure, especially with a lot of skills being transferable. Um, this, these questions are, again, going to be a bit more specific. Um, is there anything specific about data science that interests you? Yeah, I would say um, it's interesting how, like, numbers can, like, tell a story. Like, um, I think And also like trying to figure out like the story behind that. That's also specifically interesting to me. I've always, I've also like I've always liked math. Um, and I've also liked programming. So I feel like it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Um, but um, I also think the fact that you can apply data science to like any other field that's being studied. Like what I'm trying to say is like you can study data science in business. You can study data science in economics. You can study data science in like something engineering related. Like I feel like you can apply it anywhere. So um, like what I want to do in like my future future 
is um probably do like business analytics like major in like computer science or data science and have a minor in business like I like how I can take this one thing that I like and also take this other thing that's in a completely different field and like combine them like I can look at business analytics so um I like that like unique aspect of it um is there any experience that you've had that might help you in your future career yeah, I would say the classes that I've taken in high school. Um, so I've taken like um, three computer science uh, classes in high school because that's all that's been provided. But also my high school does a pathway program. If you're familiar with the IB, um, it's a two-year course and it's it's in the name. It's like you choose whichever pathway you want to pursue and just having that class every day for two years, I know that's definitely going to help me. And also um the connections that my high school has like connecting me to different companies and internships that like were required to go through I think that's definitely a helpful experience like this summer um I had an internship at SAP and SAP is like such a big company that uses like their own like applications and programs and I feel like experiencing that like and knowing like not the ins and outs of the company but like definitely being exposed to it that will definitely help me in my future career because SAP is definitely like a company I'm looking at um and kind of like I answered like the question like a little bit ago that like help definitely help. Yeah, especially um high school experience is also really important. It's not just college. Mm -hmm. Um, now this is the live Q and A. So if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat. Or if you guys like may not have a question right now. I can drop my email in the chat and you can feel free to ever email me if you have any questions in the future. Yeah, I think I can also link. Oh, and I'll put the Coder World like information for like social media and the email in case you're ever interested in using um, any of our resources or anything like that to pursue computer science. If there aren't any questions, we can just go on to the next slide, I think. I don't think there's any questions. Um, so we have a new engineering magazine available on our website at scientolic.org. Um, and these are our socials. Um, it's our website, Instagram, and email. If you have any Questions or concerns, you can email us at sciencehogmagazines at gmail.com. Um, and if you guys want to work with Science Hollywood, you can join as a team member. Um, for example, con you can make content, you can help edit, you can do our art, you can be a part of the outreach, which I'm part of. You can um, help us on our social media, and we also have uh, AP Toolbox help, or you can be an ambassador. Um, or you can contribute in other ways by submitting your blog or magazine that you want to be featured, and you should um, join our mailing list. So we, if we have any updates or anything, we can send you an email about that. Um, and these are our lovely um, partnerships for this uh, conference. Um, I'm so sorry, I didn't put the next session, but the next session is going to happen at 7.45, and I think um, that's it. Thank you.